Hi there, it's Lee here. Welcome to iMind Blocks. Hope you're having a great day today. In this video, I'll be sharing with you a new coin called Dagger. Now, this coin was formerly called Cheat Coin, which is not a very good name. But anyway, Dagger is a new coin. And this is what I'm going to be sharing with you today. So starting off um, on the, the official website, which is um, again, not a great website, but it's early days for these coins. And this is what I really want to share with you. It's a new coin, new project. It's CPU mineable and the, the difficulty is low. So we should be able to kind of jump in, mine a little bit of this coin, get a bit of a head start and kind of beat the, beat the crowd effectively. So these coins are always a little bit of a gamble, but I think if you mine a little bit of it and put it on, you know, on the back burner, stash that away somewhere, um, potentially you can do quite well with these coins. So this is the official website. Like I say, there is also a uh, Bitcoin talk thread, but it doesn't have an awful lot of information on there. It's mostly just um, commentary. But anyway, so this is the roadmap. So it's recently been launched as a mainnet. They've done some testing and now the mainnet is now launched. I think they launched it on the 5th of uh, January. And it uses a DAG system rather than the blockchain. So that's, um, that's kind of its main uh, feature. If we move over, you can see the GitHub page, and this has got a bit more information regarding it. So the blogs, uh, blocks, sorry, have a token reward of 1,024, and then they go down to uh, 512 um, after four years. So it's quite a big um, token supply initially. So that could be good for us. It means that we can mine quite a lot of tokens um, quite easily and hopefully um, they will be valuable in the, in the future. At the moment, there is no um, exchange or method of exchange for this token. So um, you're mining it and then really you're gonna be kind of holding it for a while. So on with the mining of this token. So like I say, it is a CPU mineable coin and that's what we're gonna be using and mining today. So if you go to the downloads page, of course, I put all the links in the uh, description. Um, I'm downloading the Windows 64 GUI, so it has a um, small user interface, there's not very much to it. So if we download that, and um, for a bit of extra safety, I'm going to be running this program uh, within a virtual box, so that keeps it separate from the rest of my main system. So you can see here, this is the program that I have uh, downloaded. So it's the Win64 GUI, and I'm going to extract that. Let's just and copy that and just move it up on the folder. I prefer to have it in the top folder rather than going through a folder and folder. And then I'm gonna copy this over to our desktop. So just copy and paste it over to there. We can close the downloads folder now. So from the wallet folder, you're gonna have four files in there and you want to run this one here, this xdag wallet. And we want to confirm the security notice and continue on with that. So you can see this is the interface and there's not very much to it at all. So you can mine using this interface and you can also use it for sending your transfers, etc. So it's kind of like a mini wallet, mini miner interface. So to start off with, we can mine to a pool. So if we go back to that web page, there is some pools that are on there. So I'm going to copy that whole address, the top pool go back to our wallet interface and I'm gonna paste it in there. So you need to paste the, the entire IP address and also the port on the end. So make sure you include all of them. And then we can connect using the amount of our CPU threads. So I'm gonna say free uh, threads or cores. And then we click on go. So it's gonna ask us for a password. This is the password for our wallet. And retype it. Okay, it also asks us for some random keys. Um, as far as I'm aware, we don't need to record them. It might be a good idea to just to record some random keys anyway, um, just in case you ever need them in the future. It's not very clear. I don't think you will need them, but you might want to write them down just in case they're ever needed. And click OK. Then the wallet is going to start initializing. 
Um, it might take a few minutes for your machine for it to initialize. At first it says like not responding, um, but just give it a plenty of time and it should come good in the end. It will come up with a little notification there. So we'll just leave that running for a few minutes. So just while the wallet is initializing, we're just taking a look at the Bitcoin talk thread here. Like I said, there's not very much on here at all. Uh, you can see the user like I say, it's previously called a uh, cheat coin. So this is just kind of like an alt name, not a real uh, username effectively. Um, just like a, what's the word I'm looking for? A a secondary account that, you know, like an alias name. Um, and here you've got some basics regarding the coin itself, but there's not very much information on there. But the thread is quite deep. Like I say, it's from originally based on the um, the cheat coin, so I think that's why it's got an, an initial um, user sort of following. Um, but there's not very much to it. There's more on the website, although the website's not very good, really just the very basics of information. So this project will be interesting to see how it turns out in the future. Um, it's kind of a big unknown, but I think potentially it could be good. Um, okay, so our wallet has now initialized. So you can see that we are connected to the pool. We're using free threads. We've got a balance of zero, but we also have an account address. And you can see there's the status at the bottom. So connected to the mainnet pool, it's mining on a normal operation. One of the minor issues or is that we can't see our hash rate. So we don't really know what the performance is of our miner. Um, so that is a bit of a bit of an inconvenience we're kind of really going blind into this we don't really know what what they what that indicates we just know that we are mining but we don't even know exactly how much there was also um i think there was a a block explorer let's see if i can find it again um oh yes that's the main net but i don't know if it had Oh yeah, there is a hash rate, a network hash rate. But like I say, that's only for the network. We can't see how much we're, our CPU is hashing out. I don't think we can connect to these pools, unfortunately. So at the moment, we're going there a bit blind. And what I hope to do is I'm probably going to CPU mine for a couple of hours, um, then see how that reflects into my balance. And I'll probably share that with you guys um, in the YouTube comments um, so you can kind of see what the performance is relative to your own. Uh, if I go back and show you the uh, wallet, you can see that there is some updates in there. So we have a text file, two text files actually, and also a wallet.dat file and this key file as well. Um, I'll just open up the cheat coin file. Let's see what's inside. Okay, so this um, appears to be a log file uh, where it's connecting to the pool. And I'm not sure what the DNA is. Okay, so we can see it's, um, what's this, it's mining on two threads. Oh, so maybe it's uh, four core with two threads each, maybe, but not an awful lot more information on that. So uh, yeah, can't really work out a lot more from that. I'll just have to leave it running and see where we end up with it. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna leave that here. Um, like I said, this coin is a completely unknown coin. Who knows what will come of it? Maybe something, maybe nothing. It is a bit of a gamble. Um, but I just wanted to share with you, with you, because like I say, it's a new fresh coin. It's low difficulty, CPU mineable. So you guys maybe can um, take a look at this and see how you get on with it. As always, thanks for watching. Questions or comments, uh, leave those down below and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. Till then, see ya.